If you've ever worked with a website, you've probably heard of margin and padding before. And perhaps you even know the difference between the two, but when you try to apply it inside of a website builder or when building your site in general, you just can't quite get the spacing to look right. So today I'm going to talk about the difference between the two, margin and padding, and how they affect your work inside of a website builder. Let's get started. So at a basic level, margin and padding affect elements within a website. And specifically, if you think about any element inside of your web page, like a box, let's say this is a text container, so this is a box that has text inside of it, margin will affect the box itself and position it. It'll push things around it. So if you say margin left, it's going to push it or stuff outside of it, outside of the box, 10 pixels. If you say padding, that's going to affect what's ever inside the box. So if you have text inside of this box and you say margin left 10, inside it's going to move things just 10 pixels. Let's actually move over to a design program and let me show you visually what I mean. So if you had, for instance, three boxes here and we said on this first one, title one, uh, this box, if we gave it a margin left 10, we'll pretend that this pink box here is margin and 10. So we added that. What would happen is on the outside of it, it would move the box itself, the element itself, 10 pixels. Now if you said margin top, you're going to see the same thing where it would push everything down by 10 pixels. And because these are beside each other, it's going to kind of move the whole stack of them together. And if you said margin right though, so outside of the box, 10 pixels, it's going to push whatever's to the right of it, 10 pixels over. That works the same for below. So margin bottom pushes it down. And there we are. So margin deals with outside of the elements, be it an image, be it a text container, whatever it is. Now padding has to do with inside the box. So if the same box, if we said padding top 10, Let's make it the same size just for clarity. Okay, so padding top, what would happen is this goes inside the box. So that would push the text down inside the box or any elements inside of this element 10 pixels down. If we said padding left, it would add a space of 10 to the left side for anything that's inside of this element. And in a nutshell, that's margin and padding. And that's all fine and good. It's the difficulty comes when you're using a website builder, be it Elementor or Beaver Builder in WordPress or perhaps Squarespace or Wix, any of the above. Sometimes when you're adding margin and padding, it doesn't seem to move the way you want it. You'll be looking at a example like this and for some reason, this is down here, but you'll click on the element and you'll see that there's no margin on top. So why on earth is it moved about? That comes down to a couple factors, specifically that every single element and container within the website itself can have margin and padding. What that kind of looks like is if we go to the second demonstration here, you can imagine that this is your website and it has kind of a fixed width of this much. These are just uh, background border on the outside. So when you drag an element in or you drag a row or a column, as you'll do so here, the two things I note is that this element itself, this middle white part, the body container, itself could have margin or padding. So if it's padding, it's going to relate to the inside of it, margin be the outside, as we just dis discovered. But for this thing too, you dragged in a row and for some reason it's kind of squished in. That's because the main container of everything else could have margin and padding. But you dragged in this column, you dragged in this row, and then you dragged in another row or like a section or a column and that too could have margin and padding. Let's take it piece by piece here. So let's say we've added a row and there's no um, no margin and padding on the main one. So we brought in a row and we have from within that row we dragged in two elements, one, two. So the thing to note is that there's lots of margin and paddings going on here that could be happening. So there could be padding, as we mentioned, on the bigger overall container itself. There would be padding on the inside of this row, right? So going all around, top, bottom, left, and right. 
there would be a padding that you'd have to contend with. Right? And then inside of the box itself, let me change this color so it's a little bit easier to discern, there's also going to be a margin and a padding. So when you're trying to go through the elements and discover why something's being pushed around the way it is, you'd have to look at the text element itself, the text box, or even like the where the text is contained, the box that contains that text, the row that contains both of those things, or even the entire space around it. So every element that you drag into a website builder, and again, this goes across everything. This is a good thing to understand for any rep website builder you use. Squarespace, Wix, Elementor, Beaver Builder within WordPress. Everything would work like this, where every element or every row or column or piece of structure you drag in will have those elements. So the other thing to note, you're not going to see this too often, uh, but it's good to know nonetheless just in case, and that has to do with widths. So um, if we take our example here, let's get rid of everything we had previously. And let's say for simplicity's sake, we had these two elements side by side, and they took up the entire width, just to make it easy for the description. All right? So they take up the entire width of the space, 100%. Now, if your widths are, for these columns, are percentages, so if you go into the width of this element, this text element, or it could be an image or anything else, but if the width of this is percentage, specifically we say this is 50% of the container width, 50%. When you add a margin to it, let's say you add a margin right, what's going to actually happen is because the 50, or the margin you add to the right will become part of that 50%. It's not going to push the thing on the other side. So what would happen, almost counterintuitively, is this would shrink. Same thing if you add margin left. You know, It's not going to just push the element, it's actually going to shrink the element. And everything would get pushed in. Right, and then same too for the right one. And let's say on the left box here, we get really crazy. We do a margin left of like, you know, 80, 90, 100 pixels. The entire box on that side is going to shrink to that amount, and that'll actually push up against the other margin because that becomes part of the element. That's if you're doing percentages, because as I said, the main thing there is this overall container still needs to take up 50%. So it just kind of adds it to the total. It still only takes up 50%. Now, if you're dealing with something with or pixel widths. So as opposed to 50%, this is, let's say, for math's sake, that this width is 1,000 pixels, 1,000 pixels, the width of that white space there. And we tell this element to be 500 pixels and this one to be 500 pixels. That's how it looks. What will happen is if you say on this first element, I want a margin right of 10, it's going to add it to the side and it's going to push this over. The problem now is that it, this whole thing is too wide. It's gone beyond 1,000 pixels. So what you'll notice will happen is it's going to drop down below. So immediately, because there's too many pixels, more than 1,000, it's going to get bumped down below. Now, the way to fix this is you'd actually want to adjust the width to include that margin. Specifically, so we had said it was uh, I think like let's call it 50. You'd want to reduce the width of your column by 50 so that when it gets pushed, it still fits in nicely. And you'd want to do the same thing if you added it to the left. You'd again have to reduce the width of this one if it's done in pixels to accommodate for that 50 so that altogether the width of your element plus your margins on the outside of it includes um, only adds up to 500. Right, so that's, that's an important note. So for when it's a percentage width, which honestly most of the website builders use, so most often in our example you'll see that it's only done in percentages, not uh, pixels. But if you ever come across a pixel version, you're going to have to take that into effect that uh, messing with the padding and the margin, and margin specifically, will increase the width, and you have to be conscious of that. So just a small thing to note, generally, again, you're not going to have to deal with it just besides the percentage and how that works. Let's hop over to a website and actually play around with it real time. So the tool I'm using here, this is Beaver Builder, which I use for my own site. It's a great 
site building tool. If you use Elementor or Divi or if you're in Squarespace or Wix, again, you understanding this core concept applies to all of them. So what do we mean by that? Let's, let's dive in. So let's add some padding and margin to these two elements here. We have two boxes with a bit of text and we want to add some spacing to in between the two of them and add some padding inside of it. So to do so, we have a lot of options. So we could edit the text item itself. So I've now clicked into left text as you can see and in the text element I can add in this case for this particular builder I can only add margin. It's not letting me add padding. But you can see if I add add it, it moves. Now in this case it's added 40 across. That's because this link here it's just a shortcut to say whatever margin applies to one top, bottom, left, right apply to all. That's something you can remove. You just unlink that and now you can do 40, 10, 10, 10 for instance. And you see how that moves. But that's just one place where this exists. Let me uh, zero that out. That's just the text element itself. If we go one level up, and this will vary for whatever system you're using, but you just have to do a little bit of exploration. In particular, I'm going to look at the column. Hit column settings, so that's for this box that contains this text itself. And here you see again we have margin and padding. So if we give padding, and let's say, uh, let's give it 20 all around, it blows it up. So here's where it could get confusing, right? So we've added it here, we'll hit save. Great, 20 picks. Now you come into the element, you click on it, and there's no padding, there's no way for me to move it up. I don't, I want it to touch the top, but it, I've clicked into this element, where's the padding? Like how can I adjust it? Well, as we now know, what you can do is you find the column or the element that contains it, and that's where you adjust the margin, the padding. So here you can see, and there it, all the margin is, margin padding is. So it's an element within an element within an element, or a way to think of a container within a container within a container, and each of those containers can have margin and padding. So let's add the same here to the right. Um, we did that to the column. Let's do that again. So we'll add a column, column settings. Now let's go ahead and put 20, so it's the same. I said so where it would get frustrating is perhaps if you clicked margin top, and it would look like that. It's taking a bit of time for uh, saving and reloading, and that's fine. You click into it, into the two of them, and you're just scratching your head. Why on earth aren't these? Don't these look the same? Understanding it's elements within elements within elements, and you can adjust the margin padding for each. That will really help. So let's do it again one more time here. So we have a banner with "Welcome to my website" and some text below. I'd like this banner to be larger, so I'd like to add a little bit of padding to it. And then I'd like the text here to be pushed a little bit down and a bit more space added below. So lots of ways we can achieve this. We can either add some padding to this element itself, or again, in this case, margin, because it doesn't give me padding on a text element, and that's fine. So we can say 20, but you know what? I actually want to add a whole bunch to the bottom more than the top to make it a bit more centered. So I'll unclick the link values and move it down. And you can kind of see real time what that starts to look like. You know what, I wouldn't mind a bit above. And there's that's how that works. Tell you what though, let's uh, get rid of that and come at it a different way. So that'd be one way to do it. Perfectly fine, totally works. Another way to do it is we could go to the column settings, as we learned. And again, it might be a little bit buried, so you just have to play with your system and find it. And Google's your friend here. We can say Elementor Edit Column or Row. In this case, now I have my <clears throat> margin and padding. Now, because I want to adjust the amount of space inside the element, anything inside we know is padding, so that's what we'll work with. Uh, let's give top of 20s to start with. Right, we'll do just 20s all around, see what that gets us. And left, okay. Now, it's not quite enough on the bottom, so I'm gonna adjust that a bit further, just to make it a bit more balanced. You know what, I kind of like it being 80 and a bit more there. Okay, so in this case we did it to the column. We could easily have done that uh, by editing just the text box as well. You can play around and see what you like the best. Now, I, I also mentioned I wanted to push this bit of text below the banner down. So again, the two ways we could consider doing this, well, there's more than two, but two we'll discuss. Uh, because it's outside 
of the element. I want to push an element outside of this element away. We'll use margin. So we'll go for the bottom. It might be in the text element. So that one's not working. Gotta love when a demo goes well. <laughs> but not a problem, because we know there's a different ways to do it. We're not going to worry about it. We'll hit save. So let's go to the... Um, oh, tell you what, that's because I was editing the column of it. And the way Beaver Builder works is that there's rows. So it adds slots kind of vertically, and then you add columns inside of it. So I was adjusting the margin. And because the margin of that column exists within the row, the column is inside the row, right? Container within container. It was making it taller. So to do that officially, I'd actually have to click row settings. So the big, bigger item going across. And let's try there. It's going to be embarrassing if this doesn't work. Hey, there we are. There's one way to skin it. So let's push it away there, and we'll add the second part on the other one. So troubleshooting on the go. Always great to see. Now, as I also said, I want a lot more space below it here to let it breathe. So I'm going to click into the row. So again, a couple ways we could do it. We can click into the text element itself and add the padding of the margin here. In this case, again, text elements in this system don't exist. It doesn't have padding. So instead, we could go to the margin bottom and add a whole bunch. That works. Or we can go to the element that contains it. Hit cancel. We'll go to the row settings. And here, I could add padding to the bottom or margin. So let's try first by adding some uh, margin or padding to the bottom. So we're making the element itself kind of larger. Right? You can see when I hover over top how much larger this box has gotten because it's inside the element. Uh, margin, we want to push the bottom down a different way. You'll see that this has remained the same, but it's pushed it down. So two different ways to skin it, all within that column, or you could do it inside of the text element itself. So, you know, it's just really important to note. So it's margin and padding. So specifically, margin deals with moving things outside of a particular element and moving it around. So 10 down, 10 left, that's the whole element and whatever it contains, like text, for instance. And padding has to do with the amount of space within that element on the outsides. So if you say 10 left margin, it's going to move the element or elements outside of it left. If you say padding left, it's going to move items inside of it, add spacing to it, and it'll actually move things right. So add it to the left side, 10 pixels of spacing. And more importantly, understanding when you're building a site with Wix or Squarespace, Elementor, Divi, or Beaver Builder, like I like to use, uh, it's containers within containers within containers. I would have a piece of text. I would then have a column. I would then have a row. There can be margin and padding on each element. And if for some reason you can't get spacing, just go through methodically one by one by one until you find where the extra margin and spacing is, adjust it, and get your site looking great. So I hope that helps with margin and padding. And it's a great step towards making your website look so much better. So cheers to your great looking websites.